Hello and welcome to the Saturday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Warwood. Eight races at Ascot on Saturday. Let's have a look at the likely conditions. We're expecting a mostly sunny day around 29 degrees Celsius. The track to be in the good four range and the rail to be in the inside or true position. Race number one will jump at 12.24. It's the commit to change handicap over 1,100 metres. The replay horse can look at the unbeaten mare, Enticing Star. Massive run for Enticing Star to come through if good enough at the 250. My Demi, Speeding Comet have come together from Secret Assault. Down on the rails, here's Enticing Star winding up now. Enticing Star at the 100 comes at Speeding Comet. Enticing Star against the rail draws away. A oh, great return, three out of three Enticing Well, she certainly is very exciting, is Enticing Star. Three from three, William Pike has ridden it in all of her races. He stays aboard here gets in on the limit weight. And I think if Enticing Star is close enough in the run here, she should be making it four from four. She goes up on top. And uh, number two, Shady Gray is probably the interesting runner for mine. Back with David Caruana, formerly with Simon Miller. They've swapped this horse around a couple of times during its career. It's got really good first up form run, a really good first up figure last time out. And therefore, I'm gonna put him in for second here. Number one, Jing Tang's been up for quite a while, was behind Snow Lord last time out, missed the placings. Has got top weight here. Andrew Castle does take a little bit of weight off its back, but Jing Tang only for the mowerness for mine. And then number three, Speeding Comet, who we saw in the replay race, beaten two lengths by Enticing Star. Can't see it turning the tables on the favorite. My top selection in race number one, going with number seven, Enticing Star, to be two Shady Grey, one Jing Tang, and three Speeding Comet. Race number two at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 1.04. It's the Rotary Club of Perth handicap over 1,400 metres. The replay horse, look at this impressive galloper, Pearls and Prawns, winning at Ascot. Quarter. It's the raging favourite that leads Pearls and Prawns. Keeper's tail sets after her. They've booted well clear from bounce down. Scandal keeper. Pearls and Prawns down to the 150. In front of Keeper's tail. Further back, Lucky Legacy runs on, but she kicks in another gear. Pearls and Prawns. She beats off Keeper's tail, followed then by Lucky Legacy. Pearls and Prawns is going places for Brock Luthwaite. He's probably going to target the Fitz and Mares races later in the year. I think the key to this race on Saturday, which does look like a match race between the top two on the card, is that Pearls and Prawns is drawn inside of Necklace, and I also think she might be a little bit better suited over 1,400 metres than the runner from the Fred Kersley yard. So Pearls and Prawns goes on top. The obvious danger is number one, Necklace. One three start to go over 1,100 metres, then was second to get the vibe over 1,200, and then was second to Miss Leckie from the same stable over 1,400 metres. I thought she had that race shot to pieces about 300 metres out but she didn't go on with it and I think she's probably better suited back in trip but 1400 metres here goes in for second. Number three another vision well I think Warwick Bradshaw was trying to steal some black type for this uh, uh, trusty mare in the last race that was the Sheila Gwynn finished fourth that day I think if he finished third he might have retired another vision with a bit of black type on her pedigree page. Goes in for third here with a claim for Fiona Bell and then number four Regal Moon probably will go around under the odds for mine not all that well related and its uh, form on the track isn't that you'd expect of a Bob and Sandra Peters Galloper. My well, top selection in race number two, going with number two, Pearls and Prawns, to beat number one, Necklet, three, Another Vision, and four, Regal Moon. Race number three at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 1.44. It's the Neo Metals handicap over 1,400 metres. It's exclusively for the three-year-olds. The replay horse, can look at number six, Alpha Sky in the race won by Fabergino. The top of the straight, Fabergino, led by two and a half to Emily Argo. Alpha Sky's down near the rail. Stage man continues to run on, but Fabergino's opening up now. She's got all cylinders blazing at the 100. Fabergino, he hasn't moved on her yet. Fabergino comes away from stage man, Alpha Sky. Golly, she's a class filly. This. Well, Fabergino is a horse going places, but I think that the form behind it's pretty good as well. Fabergino beat four previously unbeaten horses in that race, one of which was Alpha Sky. I think none of them lost anything in defeat. She was beaten just two and three quarter lengths was Alpha Sky. I think that's the right form line here. There's a lot of hype around in love with Palace and Rogan Nella, but I'm gonna go with uh, Alpha Sky on top, and I think the main danger may also come out of that race in Aaron Boy, was beaten eight and a half lengths that day, 
did have some excuses. The rest of its form pretty good and has drawn barrier four here with a claim for Brody Kirby. So six on top with number three being the main danger. I've got Roganella in for third. One first up beat Mrs. Brown's by. I'm not too sure about the strength of that form. And then you've got number four, Gifted Warrior for Robert and Todd Harvey. They're flying at the moment. They come out of the race within love with Paris last start. I think it might be able to turn the tables here. That race wasn't run at a particularly strong tempo. I have got queries about a lot of the form surrounding the top one. My top selection in race number three, I'm going to go with number six, Alpha Sky, to beat three Aaron Boy, two Roganella, and four Gifted Warrior. Race number four at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 2.24. It's the change in lives handicap over the staying trip of 2,100 metres. The replay horse can look at Middle Earth, winning last start on the 28th of April at Ascot. And Elegant Blast out near the middle of the track. Corporate Larrikin at the 200 mark from Taxagano. One short down on the fence. Here's Elegant Blast starting to run on. She's coming at them. Corporate Larrikin, one short Elegant Blast. And now Middle Earth right down the outside. Elegant Blast and Middle Earth. They went to it. Middle Earth. Well, Middle Earth has won three of his last five starts. They've all been this campaign. And he certainly should have every chance to run over the top of his rivals here. Only seven runners, but I'm pretty convinced there'll be a relatively fast tempo with corporate Larrigan engaged for Clint Johns de Porter and Angela Smith. The tempo will be the key to the race here, and that's why Middle Earth goes on top. From number three at the ready, won the Geraldton Cup two starts ago. Last start was behind Mississippi Delta. William Pike gets on well with his horse. Always got to respect the wizard when he teams up with Anne Durant. Uh, number six, Kuganites is one of two horses in this race will wear bar plates. That is a negative. Was behind Mississippi Delta and at the ready in the last start. Prior to that, had won the Narragin Cup. And then number one, already famous, getting out to a, the, probably the right trip for this horse now. Barry one is a plus. Will probably box seat behind Corporate Larrikin, but the weight is a concern here. 59 kilos might be hard to sprint home off that. My top selection in race number four, we're going to go with number five, Middle Earth, to beat three at the ready, six Kuganites, and one already famous.